Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa and if you're new here, hi. This is my YouTube channel and I talk about missing children. Um, I talk about missing children. Sorry guys, oh my god, my intro. I need to start trying to figure out how to um, do an intro, but yeah. So anyways, if you like hearing about the missing children cases that I talk about and, you know, and everything like that, if and you want to start spreading the words go ahead and subscribe to my channel i post as many times as i am capable of so yeah let's go ahead and get started so today we're going to be talking about the evelyn harley disappearance evelyn grace harley was born born on november 21st of 1938 was an american teenager who mysteriously disappeared on october 24th of 1953 from La Crosse county wisconsin her disappearance for search involved 2,000 people, 202,000 people, in the first year following her disappearance, investigator questioned more than 350,000 people. As of 2023, no trace of it ever been found. So on October 24th of 1953, Vigo Versam, a professor of the La Crosse State College, now University of Wisconsin, La Crosse, hired Evelyn Harley, the daughter of a fellow professor, to take care of his month of his month old daughter. That evening, Evelyn's father, Richard, called and reversed in house several times after she failed to check in as it planned it at 8.30 p.m. He received no answer and concerned he drove to the resume house. When Richard arrived, the doors were locked, the lights and radio were out on, and items were scattered all over the house. The living room furniture had been moved around to different places, as were Evelyn's school books. Richard found her shoes in a different room, one shoe upstairs and one downstairs. He also found his daughter broken glasses and upstairs Richard did not find Evelyn in the house. Richard also found every room in the house locked except one in the basement that was locked at the back of the house. An open window there was missing a screen and the screen was found leaning against an outside wall. He also found a short step ladder becoming to the owner possession <laughs> possession at the open window. Prey makes were found some windows and footprints have been found in areas of the house. Blood was found both sides in the house and the yard with bloody handprints about 100 feet away in the garage and nearly house. The children in Evelyn have been cared for and was found asleep and unharmed. Police believe someone took Evelyn, though the yard but dropped her on the ground before, carrying her further. The police used dog to pick up her scent trial, trail, which ended at a Corley Drive two blocks away. Police thought Evelyn must likely put into a vehicle there and driven away. They were told by the neighbor that they had seen a car repeatedly driving around in the neighborhood and another person who lived nearly claimed they had her scream on hour earlier. Let me fix my computer. <laughs> The witness thought it was just children playing. Two days after the accident, local resident E. Ed Offer told police that while driving his vehicle, he was almost hit by a dark green two-tone 1942 Berkey as it was speeding in the Wesley direction. Inside the Berkeley House, Offer reports seeing one man was driving in the vehicle while a second man was in the back seat with the girl. He offered also report that a few minutes earlier, he had seen the same two men with the younger girl as he was pulling outside his brother-in-law's house, located around the corner from the Ronsman house. Offer has stated that the girl was wedged between the two men, and he thought that it was drunk as the two men were holding her by her arms as they were walking down the street. Several days later, by Various items of clothing, many of which were stained with blood, were found in a different location. Blood from in the jacket matched Evelyn's blood type. Over a thousand members of the local community, including law enforcement office, officer in the National Guard by Boy Scout and La Crosse State College students and faculty participated in the search in October 1953. The Silver Air Pro Patrol and USA Air Force were also used in the search. A vehicle inspiration group was also undertaken with the intent of searching every vehicle in La Crosse County. 
Gas stations and tenants were asked to check cars for bloodstains, and resin graves were reopened to determine if Evelyn remains were placed with resin burial. In, 19, uh, in May of 1954, men, mass light detector tests were conducted in La Crosse High School boys and attended to find information about Evelyn's disappearance. Though local authorities had planned to test 175,000 students and faculty, the testing was considerable and was hardly after around 300 were tested. After, and let me just, with this case, I feel like if they would have done every single student, they would have probably had found the killer. Um, and I just say that because maybe it could have been somebody that knew her and knew that she was going to be there. Um, if robbery wasn't, if the robbery was not, if the break-in was not intended to be a robbery and it was just a break-in to get Evelyn at the house, it had to be someone that knew her personally and it could have been anywhere, you know, if she, um, in her school. So they could have, I felt like if they would have had not stopped, they would have probably um, found the people that did it. Um, even though lie detectors are really not visible in court, um, but back then, I felt like that was the only option they had. DNA probably wouldn't even have, at that time, wouldn't have been something that they were talking about. So, yeah, I felt like with this case, they should have tested more, done um, lie detectors to more people. After his arrest, murder Ed Gein was considered suspect in Avenue Disappears, as he was visiting a relative a few blocks away from the res resuming house at the time. However, Gain denied involvement in the disappearance and passed two light detector tests. Police found no trace of Evelyn remains during the search of Gain Plainfield property. On November 1957, authorities announced that Gain had been clear of any con connection with the disappearance of both Evelyn and Georgina Walker, 80 year old who disappeared in 1947, despite this, some call considered Gain a suspect. Evidence kidnapping led one of the biggest search in the history of Wisconsin. Public efforts to find her included the Child Project and the Sudi D's Roots Project. The reward fund established in the immediately aftermath of the event reached 160,000, um, equivalent to 72,000 in 2022. Her parents moved to Portland, or Portland, Oregon, in the 1970s and are now both deceased. In 2004, a man named Mel Wills came forward with the com conversation he recorded at a bar in 1967. Although his goal was to record a band with which was performing in the conversation between two men was intentionally recorded as well. On the tape, one of the men, Kreider Tweed Peterson, implicated himself in Jack Gertapier and an unnamed third party in the disappearance of claiming that Evelyn was murdered and buried in Larch, Wisconsin, after her kidnapping. The unnamed party is now deceased, committing suicide on December 25th of 1967. Peterson died in a heart attack in 1974. Although authorities promised, authorities promised to investigate the lead, no further development were made. And in 2016, her case would be profiled in an episode of The Vanish on September 24, 2022. Evelyn Evelyn Leary disappeared was featured in, as a case in 2024 of the case file. And that is the story of Evelyn. This story, like I said at the beginning, I mean, I just said, if they would have done more lie detector to other boys, or, and they would have not stopped at only 300 people, they probably would have found the answer that they needed. Um, I don't understand why they stopped at that number. It's, just, it's kind of weird for me because at the end of the day, it had to have been somebody that knew she was going to be there. If they, if it was, if whoever did it, if their um, attempt to break in was to rob, they didn't take anything. They only took her. So it has to be somebody that knew her. Somebody that knew she was going to be there, that she was going to be there by herself. It had to be. And it kind of bothers me that the detectives only stopped at 300. Why did they stop at 300? Who knows, but I felt like if they would have gone, they would have kept going, um, they would probably would have found the answer. 
But yeah, guys, that is the story of Evelyn. If y'all have, what do y'all think? Should they have stopped? Um, or should they have kept going? My opinion, I feel like they should have kept going and kept um, doing light detector tests. But I will see y'all soon with the whole new case.